Hey everyone, welcome back to DSP Lectures. In this video, we will see how to find energy and power of 5 common sequences. For those who are not following this lecture series, the theory related to this topic was covered in lecture 5. The link to that video is given in the descriptions below. Ok, so let's start our lecture. The question is to determine energy and average power of the following sequences. The first subsection is x1 of n equal to n into u of n. So the sequence is x1 of n equal to n into u of n. The energy of this sequence is given by E equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity absolute value of x1 of n squared which is equal to sigma n equal to 0 to infinity absolute value of n into u of n squared. Here the summation start is changed to n equal to 0 because u of n is 0 for n less than 0. So this summation becomes sigma n equal to 0 to infinity magnitude of n squared because u of n is 1 for all n greater than or equal to 0. So this becomes 0 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared plus etc which will be infinity. So the energy of this sequence is infinite. Now coming to average power p is equal to limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2k plus 1 into sigma n equal to minus k to plus k magnitude of x1 of n squared. This is equal to limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2k plus 1 into sigma n equal to 0 to k magnitude of n squared because u of n is equal to 1 for all n greater than or equal to 0 and this is equal to limit k tends to infinity 0 squared by 2k plus 1 plus 1 squared by 2k plus 1 plus 2 squared by 2k plus 1 etc to k squared by 2k plus 1. Now applying the limits k is equal to infinity to the terms we have 0 squared by 2 into infinity plus 1 plus 1 squared by 2 into infinity plus 1 plus etc plus limit k tends to infinity k squared by 2k plus 1. So as you know these terms will cancel out to 0 and the only term left will be limit k tends to infinity k squared by 2k plus 1. Now if we substitute k equal to infinity into this term it will become infinity by infinity. So we have to use the L hospitals rule. Therefore we have limit k tends to infinity differentiating k square we have 2k and differentiating 2k plus 1 we have 2 and this will be equal to infinity. So as you can see the energy of this sequence is infinite and the average power is also infinite. Therefore this sequence is neither an energy signal nor a power signal. Neither an energy signal nor a power signal. Now let's see the second question that is x2 of n is equal to a0 into e raised to j omega 0 n. Here energy is equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity magnitude of a0 into e raised to j omega 0 n squared which is equal to 
sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity magnitude of a0 into magnitude of e raised to j omega 0 n the whole squared and we know the Euler's formula e raised to j omega 0 n equal to cos omega 0 into n plus j into sin omega 0 into n therefore magnitude of e raised to j omega 0 n is equal to square root of cos square omega 0 n plus sin square omega 0 n which is equal to 1 therefore this equation simply becomes sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity magnitude of a0 squared which will be infinity now let's see the average power p p is equal to limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2k plus 1 into sigma n equal to minus k to plus k magnitude of a0 into e raised to j omega 0 n squared which is equal to limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2k plus 1 into sigma n equal to minus k to plus k a0 squared for this reason and this will be equal to limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2k plus 1 into a0 squared plus a0 squared plus etc till a0 squared and the length of the summation is 2k plus 1. Therefore, this is equal to limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2k plus 1 into 2k plus 1 times a square and this 2k plus 1 cancel out which leaves us with a squared. So for this sequence we have infinite energy and finite power. So ex2 of n is a power signal. Now the next sequence is x3 of n equal to a into cos of 2 pi n by m plus 5. Here energy E is equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity magnitude of x3 of n squared which is sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity magnitude of a square we can take outside so I am writing it outside cos 2 pi n by m plus phi the whole squared. Now we know the trigonometric identity cos 2 theta equal to 2 cos square theta minus 1 and this gives us cos square theta is equal to half plus cos 2 theta by 2. So using this identity our equation becomes a square into sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity 1 by 2 plus cos 2y by 2 where y is equal to 2 pi n by capital M plus phi. Now we need to sum these terms from n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. When it comes to summing the cos function an interesting thing happens. To explain that I have taken a graph of cosine function as an example. Let us now focus our attention to one period of this signal and see how the summation comes over one period. If you see this sample is the negative of this sample. Similarly this sample is the negative of this sample. In similar fashion this sample and this sample are equal and opposite in magnitude. 
this sample and this sample are equal and opposite in magnitude this sample and this sample are equal and opposite in magnitude so the point here is if we take the summation of samples over one period they cancel out each other and the summation will be equal to zero similar thing happens for the next period and so on therefore as we take the summation of this term from n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity we are considering all possible values of n and every period in this sequence will cancel out and this term will evaluate to zero so what's left with us is a square into summation n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity half which will be infinite so energy of x3 of n is infinite now coming to average power p we have limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2k plus 1 into sigma n equal to minus k to plus k half plus cos 2y by 2 just like before let us see what happens to this term so let us take a fresh graph for that looking at the graph let's say if k is equal to 3 then we will sum from n equal to minus 3 to n equal to plus 3 now if we take the summation of samples from n equal to minus 3 to n equal to plus 3 some terms cancel out like this but there are some terms which are non-zero so the summation from n equal to minus 3 to n equal to plus 3 is not actually zero but some finite value similarly let's say if k is equal to 6 then the summation will be from n equal to minus 6 to n equal to plus 6 here also majority of the terms cancel out uh, let's say these cancel out these cancel out, these cancel out, these cancel out, these cancel out. But again, there are some terms which don't cancel out in the summation. So the summation from n equal to minus 6 to n equal to plus 6 is again some finite value. So we can infer that even though the summation is not always 0, the summation will always be some finite value. Let us represent this finite value with p so p is the finite value that comes out after summation so our equation becomes limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2k plus 1 sigma n equal to minus k to plus k half plus limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2k plus 1 sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity cos 2y by 2 um actually we missed out this a so let's write it here a square and here i am taking that a square outside all brackets okay so this equation becomes a square into limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2k plus 1 into 2k plus 1 times half plus limit k tends to infinity 1 by 2k plus 1 into summation n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity cos 2y by 2 and we used p to denote the summation of cos 2y therefore we have p by 2 and this will be equal to a square into these terms cancel out therefore we have a half plus 1 by 2 into infinity plus 1 into p by 2 because we are taking this limit inside and this term will be 0 therefore all that is left is a square by 2 okay so the energy of the sequence is infinite and the average power is finite therefore x3 of n is a power signal okay now let's move to the next question x4 of n equal to 
a times sin of 2 pi n by m plus 5. But we know that sin theta is equal to minus cos theta plus 90 degree. Therefore, x4 of n becomes minus a cos 2 pi n by capital M plus 5 plus 90 degree. Now you can proceed to find out the energy and power of this sequence just like how we found out for x3 of n. So the energy of x4 of n will be infinite and average power will be a square by 2. Now understand that this negative sign won't be a problem as we are squaring the signal in our calculations. Ok so please note that there is no effect of time shifting, time expansion, time reversal and amplitude reversal on the total energy of an infinite length discrete time systems. Ok, now let's move on to our final question x5 of n. Here energy E is equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity magnitude of x of n squared which will be sigma n equal to 0 to 3 magnitude of x5 of n squared because x5 of n is defined only from n equal to 0 to n equal to 3 and this will be 1 squared plus magnitude of 2 squared plus magnitude of minus 2 squared plus magnitude of 3 squared which will be 18 joule. Coming to average power, we have to go back to our definition of power of a sequence. We have defined average power as total energy by total length of sequence. And here total energy is 18 joule, therefore 18 joule by total length is n equal to 4. So 4 which is 4.5 watts. So is this sequence an energy sequence or power sequence? If we check our definition of energy and power sequences, we can see that x5 often does not satisfy either of these two criteria. So x5 often is neither an energy sequence, neither an energy sequence, nor a power sequence. Okay, that's all for this lecture. I hope that all the concepts that were taught in this video are clear to all of you. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Either we or some other viewer will surely help you out. Also, if you found the lecture useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. In the next video, we will learn about normalized frequency of a discrete time signal. Thank you for watching properly and have a great day.